freedom movement in India. 1. Rise of Nationalism In the preceding chapter, the aspects such as early resistance by Indians to British rule, the revolt of 1857, growth of Indian renaissance and the rise of national consciousness among Indians were discussed. Under the British rule, all sections of Indians were affected by their ex exploitive policies. The chief factors which contributed for the growth of Indian national consciousness were the introduction of English education, administrative and political unification, common economic exploitation, socio-religious reform movements, development of modern means of transport and communications, growth of Indian press. English education was introduced by British in India to produce a crop of English educated Indians who could be employed, cheap for carrying out their day-to-day -day administration in India at lower levels. English served as a medium of expression for Indians to share their common feelings of being exploited by a common enemy, the British. Development of modern means of transport and communication Railways and other transport and communication were developed by British in India for quick movement of troops, for carrying away the raw materials from the hinterlands of India to seaports, for facilitating the manufactured goods from Britain to reach the interiors of India. Early Political Associations In 1866, Dadabai Navroji organized Pune Sarvajanika Sabha. Surendranath Benerji and others formed the Indian Association in 1876. In 1884, M. V. Raghavachari, G. Subramanya Iyer founded the Madras Mahajana Sava. In 1885, Feroz Shah Mehta, Tilang and others formed the Bombay Presidency Association in Bombay. Safety Wall Theory Evo Hume aimed to provide a safety wall or safe outlet to growing discontentment among the educated Indians. By patronizing a mild political movement, he hoped to prevent it from taking the shape of a major political movement. Moderates and Extremists The Indian freedom movement is broadly divided into three phases. The moderate phase of nationalism, the extremist nationalism and the Gandhian phase. Moderate phase 1885-1905 to During the moderate phase, the national leaders adopted methods such as holding meetings, passing resolutions, sending petitions and ex expressing protests. They led a peaceful and non-violent struggle against the British. It was due to moderate methods adopted by them that this phase is called moderate phase of Indian national movement. Their main demands were to establish representative bodies, two, to abolish Indian council, three, to grant individual liberty, four, to enhance import duties on foreign goods, five, to reduce military expenditure, 6. To separate judiciary from the executive, 7. To reduce land revenue, and 8. To aid Indian industries. Extremist phase, 1905 to 1919. Several factors contributed to the rise of extremist policies during the national movement in India. They are 1. The failure of moderate methods of repeat hesitation, 2. Repressive policies of the British, 3. The need for involvement of masses, 4. Growth of self-respect among the Indians. 5. Influence of international events such as Russia-Japanese War of 1905. 6. War between Italy and Ethiopia, 1896. And 7. The revolutionary movements in Ireland, Egypt, Turkey and China. And 8. Partition of Bengal by Lord Curzon in 1905. Minto Morley reforms which came in the form of the 1909 Act was the achievement of the extremists. The chief activities of the extremist phase of the national movement was the Vande Mataram movement, Swadeshi and boycott movements. Vande Mataram movement The Vande Mataram movement was launched in response to the partition of Bengal in 1905 by Lord Curzon. Swadeshi and boycott were also organized as a part of this movement. Lord Curzon issued an order on 20th July 1905 dividing the provenance of Bengal into two parts, Eastern Bengal and Assam as one provenance and the rest of the Bengal provenance, namely Bihar and Orissa as another province. But the actual motive was to stem the rising tide of nationalism in Bengal. 
an anti-partition movement was initiated on 7th August 1905. The anti-partition movement included the nationalists raising the slogan of Vande Mataram. The slogan was ac actually a part of Pakim Chandra Chatterjee's Hymn to the Motherland. Students in schools and colleges took very active part in the Swadeshi and boycott movement. The government made several attempts to suppress the students. In 1907, Lajpat Rai and Ajit Singh were, were deported. Tilak was arrested and was given save as punishment of six years imprisonment. Chidambaram Pillai of Madras and Gadi Charla Hari Sarvotama Rao of Andhra were put behind bars. The extremist movement could not survive long with the arrest of the main leader, Tilak, the retirement of Bipin Chandrapal and Aravindu Ghosh. Added to this, the people could not also stand the repressive measures adopted by British. Thus, the extremist movement got subsided. Added to this, the people could not also stand the repressive measures adopted by British. Thus, the extremist movement got subsided. Revolutionary Terrorism The governmental repression and the frustration caused by the failure of the political struggle resulted in the revolutionary terrorism. The youth of Bengal were angered by official arrogance and were filled with burning hearted for the foreign rule. They decided to copy the methods adopted by Russian nihilists. They started assassinating the unpopular British officials. India during the First World War Home Rule Movement Though Indians gave support to the British in their own efforts, some Indians were doubtful of British keeping promises after war. Hence, even when the war was in progress, an hesitation demanding for self-government was launched. Tilak organized his home rule activities in Maharashtra and central provinces. The main work undertaken by the Home Rule Leagues was to promote political education, organize classes for students on politics, print and circulate pamphlets, and collection of funds. Many moderate nationalists joined Home Rule hesitation. The government could not tolerate the increasing popularity of Home Rule movement. British Responses to the Rising Tide of Nationalism By the close of the second decade of the 20th century, the government had to confront with the united demand by the two major political parties and further faced the hesitation of the Home Rule League. British relied on repression on quaintine the nationalist hesitation. Indian response to the government's reforms. The Congress met in a special session at Mumbai in August 1918 and condemned the reforms announced as disappointing and unsatisfactory and demanded nothing less than effective self-government. While trying to appease Indians, the government was also ready with repression. In March 1919, it passed the Rowlatt Act. Mahatma Gandhi and Indian National Movement Mahatma Gandhi was born on 2nd October 1869 at Por Bandar in Gujarat. He studied law in England and left for South Africa to practice. Between 1893 and 1914, Gandhiji engaged himself in a heroic struggle against the, against the racist authorities in South Africa. It was during this long struggle lasting for two decades that he evolved the technique of Satyagraha based on truth and non-violence. Gandhiji returned to India in 1915 at the age of 46. He decided first to study the conditions in India before deciding the field of his work. In 1916, he founded the Sabarmati Ashram at Ahmadabad where his followers were taught to practice the ideas of truth and non-violence. While other nationalists were debating for reforms, Gandhiji rose to the call of peasants of Champaran in Bihar. Champaran Satyagraha the peasants in Champaran were bound by a system called Tinkatiya to grow indigo on their land and sell it to the British planters at prices fixed by them. Having heard of Gandhiji's campaign in South Africa, several peasants of Champaran invited him to rescue them. Gandhi reached Champaran and held a systematic inquiry into their grievances. Gandhiji produced similar results at Kaira, a district in Gujarat, where he launched a Satyagraha in 1918 against the revenue of officials who forced the peasants to pay taxes even though they were crop failures that year. When in 1918 the Ahmadabad mill workers went on strike for increase of wages, Gandhiji offered Satyagraha, repeat, Satyagraha and made the mill owners to yield and got 35% rise in the wages. Satyagraha against Rowlet attack. After gaining success in the above Satyagraha experiments, Gandhiji turned his attention to national-level experiments 
Like other leaders, Gandhi was also aroused by Rowlatt Act passed in February 1919. He founded a Satyagraha Sabha and asked its members to disobey the act and thus to court arrest and imprisonment. A general hartal all over the country was called for on 6th April 1919. Jillian Wallabag in Punjab, the government ordered for the arrest of two popular leaders, Dr. Satyapal and Dr. Saifuddin Kichlu. This resulted in a mob fury at Amritsar. The very next day, the people had gathered in large number on 13th April 1919 at Amritsar in the Jallianwala Bagh to protest against the British. Jallianwala Bagh was a garden place with large open space and closed on three sides and there was only one exit. General O. Dyer, the military commander, decided to terrorize the people of Amritsar into complete submission. About 1,000 men were killed and several thousands got wounded. After this massacre, martial law was proclaimed throughout Punjab and the people were submitted to most uncivilized atrocities. Different Stages of Freedom Movement Between 1924 and 1927, there was a little setback to the national movement. The Swaraj party got split. Gandhiji was living in retirement. Revolutionary terrorism. The failure of non-cooperation movement led to the revival of terrorist movement. During the year 1924, an All India Conference, the Hindustan Republican Association, was formed on organized and armed rebellion. There were also individual acts of terrorism. Lala Lajpatrai was seriously injured by a lati charge and he died of the severe injuries in protest against the loss of his great leader Bhagat Singh. Chandrasekhar Ajat and Rajguru assassinated the police officials who had earlier ordered Lati Charge and Lajpat Rai. B.K. Dutt and Bhagat Singh threw a bomb at the Central Legislative Assembly on 8th April 1929. They voluntarily quoted arrest. Bhagat Singh and Sukhdev and Rajguru were hanged on 23rd March 1931. Though these revolutionary and terrorist activities were suppressed by British, they have infused a spirit of sacrifice among Indians for the cause of the nation. Simon Commission In 1927, the British appointed Simon Commission to inquire into the working of the reforms of 1919 and to suggest further reforms. Second World War The World War II started in 1939 between England, France and Russia on one side and Germany, Italy and Japan on the other. British made India also a party to war without even consulting the popular ministries. In August 1940, Lord Linlithgow declared August offered to pacify Indians to get their support in Britain war efforts. But the Congress rejected the offer and launched the individual Satyagraha. In 1942, British sent Sir Stafford Cripps to India to meet Indian leaders. He proposed a constituent assembly after the war. Quit India Movement 1942 the development of world had great significance at this point of time to the Indian national struggle. Japan entered World War II in 1941 and conquered Southeast Asia, occupied Burma and endangered the security of India. In the midst of these developments, Gandhiji was convinced of launching a struggle of a mass movement. In August 1942, the Congress started the Quit India movement. Gandhiji gave a do or die slogan by which he meant that either free India or die in the attempt and that we shall not live to see the perpetuation of Indian slavery. The government followed very respective methods to suppress the Quit India movement. By the end of 1942, over 60,000 persons were arrested, 26,000 people were convicted and over 18,000 people were detained under Defense of India Act. Indian National Army INA. After the suppression of Quit India movement in 1942, Till the end of the war in 1945, there was not much political activity in, in the country. All the popular leaders were in jail. During these dull years, one activity stands out to be very significant. That was the work of Indian National Army by Subhash Chandra Bose. Originally, the Indian National Army was, was conceived by Mohan Singh, an Indian officer of British Indian Army. The Indian prisoners of war were handed over to Mohan Singh who tried to recruit them into Indian National Army. The outbreak of Quit India movement gave a fillip to INA. Bose joined Japanese army and began its march towards India. The INA plans failed with the defeat of Japan. It was believed that Subhash Chandra Bose died in an air crash on his way to Tokyo. 
Though INF failed in achieving its goal, it succeeded in holding up the dropping spirits of nationalists at home. Later, the INA officers were, were tried in Delhi's Red Fort. They were convicted. But the public opinion was so emotionally charged that the government finally yielded. The sentences on INA officers were suspended and the INA officers were set free. Mountbatten Plan Differences arose between the Muslim League and Congress. The League insisted on a separate Pakistan state and fixed August 16, 1946 as direct action day to attain Pakistan. Communal riots took place at several places. At this juncture, Lord Mountbatten came to India as Viceroy. He put up his plan in June 1947. The Indian Dependence Act was passed. The India and Pakistan became independent on 15th August 1947. Gandhiji, who dedicated his life for the cause of Indian independence, became a matri in 1948. India became Republic in 1950. Integration of princely states. When the British declared independence to India, it also declared freedom to more than 500 princely states along with India and Pakistan. These princely states were outside the British Indian dominion. British gave to these princely states their own independent decision to chalk out their future course. Almost all princely states except Kashmir, Hyderabad state and Junagadh decided to join Indian Union. 